Cyclone Bipo Joy expected to make landfall today, as well as other systems that are becoming active. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 15th. Ipojoy is down to a strong tropical storm, no longer a Category 1 hurricane equivalent, but still nearly at that threshold. The 23rd storm of the year so far, still code red, mainly due to its rain expectations, which could still cause major impacts. In the Atlantic, it's day 15 of hurricane season, and we do have a 10% chance that we've designated for a potential system that could form in the main development region uh, later on next week probably uh, that could be a short-lived tropical cyclone interesting in the eastern pacific we've now got two areas of interest that have been marked a 10 percent way out east that will form much later on and the 20 percent that we've got that is current uh, that could develop in the next few days that's day 32 of hurricane season there two low chances right now in the western pacific nothing's active anymore the remnants of gucho whilst they're still traceable are well off into the distance and of course in the indian ocean bipo joy is still the main threat in the northern arabian sea it's done really well to get this far uh, but it's still moving very slowly and as a result it's caused some weakening it is very close to the coast of uh, western gujarat in india near the border with pakistan although despite that uh, not much of the convection is reaching land uh, because it's partly been sheared away and probably due to land interaction. So let's take a look at the satellite imagery in the last 24 hours. You can clearly see the impression that Bipo Joy is making in the uh, Bay of in the, the Arabian Sea. Uh, Bay of Bengal, by the way, does have a few little spots of convection there as well, but look out for those red zones. That shows the areas that are receiving the most rain right now. And it's clear to see why the southern part of the storm as you can see here is bubbling up with convection very high amounts that is being pushed a little bit further away from the center of the storm which is interesting to watch uh, makes you question whether that convection will continue to sustain like that but if it does and it's expected to that means that very high rain rates will occur in that area as it already is and could cause very high amounts of rainfall inland over the coast and well beyond that Right now on the southern side of the storm we could be looking at to storm totals over water of maybe up to 50 inches which is an incredible amount of rainfall and not really surprising considering its stalling motion and the amount of rain potential it's got on that south side. But the northern side there you can see quite clearly on this unenhanced infrared that there's not very much of it. It's got a partially exposed circulation, a um, little bit of convection working its way round to that northern side to try and put up a little bit of an eye there, uh, but I think it's a little bit too uh, generous to call it that. It's more like a, you know, an exposed center of circulation that's got convection quite far away from the center now. Eastern Pacific then is ready to go. Sea surface temperatures are very warm, pushing 32 degrees Celsius, at least in the area near Mexico. The Atlantic is also very warm. Gulf of Mexico particularly here now, getting towards 30 degrees Celsius, as well as a few spots in the Caribbean. The Gulf Stream also extending 26 degrees Celsius waters quite away past the outer banks of North Carolina now, and in general in the Atlantic Ocean, the warm isotherms are extending further north. Western Pacific is also the same. You can see now the 26 degree temperatures getting close to the main Japanese islands and indeed further out to sea is reaching those latitudes out there. So a very vast area that's got good temperatures for tropical cyclone formation. Philippine Sea though the warmest near 30 degrees Celsius. The Indian Ocean, you can see a few cool spots now from where Bipo Joy has been, but near the, near the landfall zone, it is still around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius, so the conditions are still good all the way up until landfall. Southwest Indian Ocean, of course, is in the off-season now. It's cooling right down. Same too for the Australian region, which is only just hanging on to a few areas of 28 degrees Celsius waters. And the South Pacific, the same can be said for this area as well, with New Caledonia just about getting one little uh, tickle there of 26 degrees Celsius waters. 
still an enormous cool pool from Mawar and now Guchol in the Western Pacific there, uh, putting things around two or three degrees below average in that spot. The rest of the Western Pacific is near average. Indian Ocean is slightly above. Eastern Pacific looks like it's starting to overcome those cool temperatures in the open waters, very warm compared to average in the east, and in the Atlantic it's extremely warm in the main development region across to the coast of Western Africa. Here's the oceanic heat content which is getting really high values now in some parts of the Caribbean Sea and the uh, loop current in the Gulf looking good. Eastern Pacific also looking decent there from a line from the Gulf of Tehuantepec down towards the southwest out over the open waters in the tropical deep tropical zone and in the Philippine Sea also looking very good out towards the northern Mariana Islands. So what does the GFS have in store? Well here is a little bolt from the blue that we didn't expect to see uh, but we did mark this as 10% not just because the GFS has it but the ECMWF is showing signs of life as well. Well here's the system on the GFS model, there it is by the time we get to day 5 it's just about developed into a weak and small tropical storm that probably gets up to about 50 miles per hour by the time we get to the end of 120 hours there and that of course is on uh, around about the 20th of June. Eastern Pacific, uh, two weak, weak systems it has to be said. One left hand side that's right there, 16th, 17th of June, and then that other one that comes in from the right hand side towards the centre where that first one formed, and there it is, also quite weak in that period out to five days. Um, both of them do have the potential to become tropical cyclones, but Eastern Pacific fans will probably have to wait a bit longer before we see a hurricane, which is usually what we see in the early part of the season. It usually starts off very brightly. And here is the Arabian Sea, of course, Cyclone Before Joy. The GFS is holding on to the uh, suggestion that it will weaken only very slowly after it moves inland. And still a tropical storm there on the 19th, which would be nearly three days after landfall. Interesting to see whether that might happen. Landfall location very close to the border between India and Pakistan, and then moving towards the northeast passing close to New Delhi, probably just to the south there, that's actually a slight trend northwards in the last uh, 24 hours. So there's that landfall again and it does wobble a little bit before that landfall and then that slither of or uh, orange and red and even pink areas there extending right into the heart of India in some places uh, where we could see very elevated rainfall amounts which could cause flash flooding. It's not always the rainfall amount, it's sometimes the rain rate that can cause serious flash, flash flooding issues. Nonetheless, we're looking at up to 21 inches there according to that latest model, according to whatever's already fallen over the area, uh, along with I should say. Uh, so that's well above 500 millimeters of rainfall there, if that's the high potential. Karachi there by the way, 0.4 inches, now the expectation, about 10 millimeters. it's really not very much, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue in that very populated city that was at one point a little bit concerned about the storm making a direct impact. In the longer range, day 5 to 10, this Atlantic system does get ahead of itself a little bit there and it does possibly get towards 60 miles per hour before really weakening off. So it's a typical early season uh, main development region system, although perhaps some of its energy will survive just to reach the Virgin Islands before turning towards the north. Interesting to see whether that one happens or not. Uh, an interesting cruiser, early season there, but it won't get very strong. Elsewhere we're looking at the Western Pacific and this is potential for a system or two to develop in the Philippine Sea. Uh, take a look at that, there's a system that starts up there around about 22nd, 23rd becomes a tropical storm and heads towards the Philippines and a second system that could give Guam a run for its money once again uh, towards the very end of that 10 day period but it is quite far out and that's two systems involved so those tracks could vary wildly as we take a look at the models in the future. That's all the serious stuff done, you can take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items including full season and individual storm animations on request. Scan the barcode and that'll take you straight there. We also have our still waiting for Hone t-shirts which are gathering dust because we've been waiting for Hone for so long. In the Silly Range then, the Western Pacific really gets up a gear, there's three storms there, one of them strikes the Philippines, then the other two doing a little bit of a, 
a little dance around each other, the GFS not very accurate with that kind of thing. Our first system starts up again in the South China Sea and a potentially uh, strong landfall there across the coast of China, not far from Shantou. And the other system which eventually wraps itself together, I mean I wouldn't really believe any of what's been shown here, but two typhoons quite possible on the cards there next week. You can discuss that and anything else in the wide world of tropics or weather or anything on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather chat amongst other things. Well, what happened on this day? It was 2014 when we had the formation, well not just the formation, but the peak of Tropical Storm Hagabis, which was headed towards the coast of China, just to the east of Hong Kong. You can quite clearly see it there. An interesting system which had a bit of an eye feature, but wind speeds were only estimated at about 60 miles per hour. We also had Tropical Storm Christina that was on its way out after its impressive peak intensity a few days prior to that as a Category 4 in the Eastern Pacific. Elsewhere, no other systems were active on this day in that year, and to think that 2014 is nine years ago. Wow. Back to now then, the next name on the Atlantic naming list is Brett. Could it be in sight? The Eastern Pacific, Adrian, also in sight possibly, and in the Central Pacific, it is still Hone, which is quite frankly not in sight. Clearly. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Tallinn. In the North Indian Ocean, it is Tej. 23 storms so far this year, 92 is the yearly average. Southwest Indian Ocean has just two weeks to see if it can get itself another storm before the names roll over. The next name is Ghazani. In the Australian region, it's Jasper. And in the South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.